Well, hello and welcome back to Beyond Swatches. It is Tuesday afternoon, y'all. It is Tuesday afternoon. It's about 5 o'clock Eastern. Um, I'm on a three-hour break from work, so since I didn't get a chance to record over the weekend, I figured let me try to sit down real quick and give a quick update or whatever you want to call it <laughs> from last week. My purpose and if you want to follow along, I would appreciate it. But my purpose and my goal for this channel is to really just find patterns that fit, that give me a wardrobe full of knitwear that I love wearing um, and proud to say that I made that. Um, and to find yarns that make me feel happy <laughs> to work with and to look at because we know that is two separate things. Um, so yeah, so that's what we do over here. Um, as of right now, progress stands as this. I have probably about seven more inches on the blue sweater. I have seven more rows. Nope. I have five more rows on the back of the dress and then I can pick up the front and work on the front. I am currently working on that Cable Crush hoodie and I'm working on, oops, got it backwards. This is, I'm on the hood part right now. So I have to get to 64 rows. I wanna say I was at 30, so I got halfway to go on that and then we'll get the sleeves put on and then that will be done. Um, of course I was going to start another project because as soon as I get close to finishing one, I must start another. Uh, originally, I mentioned that I wanted to start that color pop or that pop blanket by Tin Can Knits. Well, I started working on that project. It was one of those magic loop situations. You start with the little pinhole cast on. That part wasn't the issue. For me, it was the laddering that was happening whenever I do magic loop, and I didn't want to deal with that. Um, I have some DPNs, but I only have three, and I need four <laughs> in order to knit it in the round, and I don't know where the other one is. So I swapped out the pattern for that for the polygon blanket that they also have. I bought it during a sale. Um, so I have that pattern, and it's just little polygon shape so this one is one completed polygon well I think it's a hexagon it's kind of blown out a little bit because it's a bright orange but it's just tons of these y'all I'm gonna be here forever so I'm making these <laughs> and I finished one it will definitely be an on-the-go project like this is definitely something I can keep in a go bag and just knit a, a round or two or whatever because you basically start from the outside and you decrease every other row so it goes pretty quick um, but because I had the brilliant idea to make two of them for my daughter and my son-in-law I'm gonna be here for a minute so that's my cast it on project but because it's a little square thing that's not a real project that's like a piece together as you go so I was on Instagram and found a post by Expression Fiber Arts. Now, if you ever seen her um, inspiration photos, they are so pretty. They're like always really color saturated, very calming, very just beautiful pictures, you know? And her colorways always look really, really nice. I've seen the um, material like the fiber that she uses it's always like alpaca and silk and and merino wool and silk and and very rarely do you see anything that looks like fake you know no acrylics over there it's all hand dyed beautiful material stuff it's also about $30 a skin <laughs> and I have been wanting to try it forever um, and I just uh, I can't bring myself to pay that amount of money for just one sweater quantity. Now, I personally would need, I think it was four skeins of yarn of fingering weight to get to that 14, that 1600 range that I normally am at. That's $30 times four. That's just, I can't, can't do it. <laughs> so, what had happened was she had posted a picture and I'm gonna put the picture up. 
And if you have been with me since the very beginning, you will remember I cast it on a cardigan, a long duster, and it was in beige. Matter of fact, it was in this yarn, if you remember. And I ended up taking it out because I just could not deal with that amount of knitting and purling in this color. It was just, it just wasn't working for me. So she posted this cardigan and I fell in love with it. It is garter, that means you just knit back and forth and that's right up my alley. It has perfect stripes, like one single stripe every X amount of rows. So, and then the yarn that she used to make it was 40% off. So, in a mad dash with the last of my bonus money from a month ago, <laughs> I went ahead and placed the order. <sighs> Not to say that, okay, so this is two separate issues. So I got the pattern, I got the yarn in the mail, I got the pattern online. When I got the pattern, I opened it and I was like, okay, this is gonna be interesting. The way she writes her patterns, now I think someone else wrote the pattern and maybe, I don't know exactly how that works, so I don't wanna speak out of turn, but, the way this pattern was written was one of those where it says things like um, work X amount of rows at the same time decrease two stitches every five rows. Like it says stuff like that. And as a person who has not ever successfully done a pattern with directions like this, I was feeling a little apprehensive once the yarn showed up. Which, by the way, what is that yarn? Hold on, let me show you. This yarn is gorgeous, y'all. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I got the yarn in these two colors. The gray is the body of the color and the white is gonna be the stripe. And it's, is it like a white? I think it's more like a grayish silvery something or another. She don't have colors. Oh wait, maybe I'm lying. This one is called Ingenuity and that one is called Bean. If you ask me, it looks like a paley gray beige situation. And this is definitely a charcoal gray. It has like some, can you see that? It has like little bits and pieces of red and stuff in there. It feels so good. It's 36% alpaca, 30% wool, 37% wool, 27% viscose, whatever that is. It feels amazing. It is a hand wash only, considered a ch chunky or bulky weight yarn. Yes, Audrey? Hi. Can I help you? A chunky weight yarn, and it feels so good as I was, you know, working with it. But back to this pattern. I don't understand what the directions are telling me. From the very first line of the pattern, it tells you Color changes are not written into the pattern, but because these are like color sequencing, you're working the color stripe after every second row, fourth row, eighth row, and then it goes back down to like six, then four, then two, something weird like that. But in the pattern, she mentioned something about that you'll be able to carry your contrasting color up the side of the work which if I'm doing this correctly when I go to add this color it's on the opposite end of where the working yarn is so something in the directions isn't making sense and I can't figure it out so of course I'm gonna email her but as I started reading through more of the directions I also saw that it had something similar going on in the sleeves and it was like at the same time blah 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 and i don't know if i feel like dealing with that amount of thinking and that amount of charting not charting um counting like obviously i'm gonna have to keep track of how many rows did i knit when do i add the the color and you know that kind of stuff and i don't know if i feel like dealing with that so i opted to possibly use this same yarn for a gg cardigan cardigan by Knittitude. What? I don't know why I always end up with her, but I just like her patterns. 
So if I end up doing that, I will still get a nice full cardigan. I might just cast on the same duster that I was doing before. And maybe for that, I can still do a, a very simple striping situation. I very possibly could just do the whole thing in garter. That would be nice. The only thing is, as you would have seen in the picture, this garter pattern was going up and down the long way versus horizontally. So that's what I really like. I thought that was really a nice take on garter in a cardigan and it would just make it I don't know more fun to knit kind of like a blanket maybe I don't know I don't know but I was a little disappointed in the directions of the pattern it requires way more keeping track of than I thought it was going to be and I don't know if I'm really here for it so but I love the yarn it feels really good and I can't wait to turn it into something because it deserves to be something so going to comb through Ravelry and see what I find. If you know of a good bulky weight pattern that I can use that you could recommend for like a Cardi or something to that effect, let me know. Now the reason why I had to put this video up today because I didn't want the week to go on is about our knit along at the end of April, our springathon, if you want to call it. Yeah, let's call it a springathon. <laughs> so I want to get ready for spring slash summer. Technically, we're already in spring, well, on this side of the US. Um, and I don't, it's starting to thunder outside. Um, and I don't want to put any pressure on you to purchase anything. This is not what that's about. So in the previous post, I had mentioned the Tin Can Knits uh, flax sweater. They have a simple sweater. They have things on their app that you can also kind of look through if you want to look at that. So I mentioned the Tin Can Knit sweater because it is definitely free on the app. It comes in three yarn weights. So you can do a, a fingering weight, DK weight, and a worsted weight. And so that's a nice roundabout choice that most people will have in stash. Whether you want to make it out of cotton, you want to make it out of wool acrylic, that part don't matter. And so the idea behind this particular knit-a-thon or spring-a-thon for us would be if you are a beginner and or even if you're an expert, I don't know, but you've never knit a sweater and you maybe have never knit one in the round, maybe you've only seamed or pieced your garments together, I think it's a really good pattern to start with to learn to knit a sweater in the round. So my thought process is we can gather together, get that first round of the neckline casted on, and if you have questions about the pattern, how to read it, how to choose your yarn, what size you want to pick. Now, all of that stuff is very detailed in her pattern. I would not even lie to you to say that I even understand the nuances of sizing, right? I understand how to pick a size for me sometimes because as you saw with the dress, I think I went down a size and needed to go up, but that's okay. Um, so the intention is I have knit this pattern more than once and I kind of know my way around it and I'm pretty cool with that. So if you want some assistance with that or if you have another pattern that is pretty much a basic, you know, basic sweater pattern, then we can come together and just try to help each other, help you, you know, if you're the beginner and just get you through getting the neckline casted on. Once you got the neckline on, you get through your ribbing, I promise you the rest of it is gonna be like, oh my God, I'm knitting a sweater, you know? So that's the purpose, that's the goal, that's what I would like to have happen. And so as I did with the previous uh, meet and greet that we did, which was really nice, um, send me an email, beyondswatches at outlook.com, let me know that you want to be a part of the Springathon, <laughs> and I will get you the link to the Zoom and we'll put it together and you know, all of that jazz. So what I'm thinking, let me double check my calendar. I am thinking that we will start this on a Friday instead of a Saturday or a Saturday. Let me know. 
when you email me, let me know what you are, what you would prefer, Friday night or Saturday afternoon. I personally would prefer Friday. I get off at 8 o'clock and I was thinking, you know, if you have a family like I do, that maybe by 8.30, 9 o'clock, everything is settled, done, kids are down, dinner is done, and things like that. And if you want to do Saturday, then we could probably do it like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This is all Eastern time, by the way. Um, and so 2 o'clock on Saturday, Eastern, um, that'll give you time to run your errands in the morning or, or if you're on the other side of the country. <laughs> and, you know, that'll be first thing in the morning before you go out to do your errands. So maybe that'll work. Um, so I was thinking we can start this on April 26th, if that works for you. April 26th or 27th, so you just let me know. When you send your email, like I said, just put Springathon in the subject line so that I'll know and then I'll put you in my little group so that I know who to send the emails to to get on the list and just type in the little body of the email and let me know what you would like to when you would like to do it and the majority rules on that so that is all i am really excited if you have questions about the pattern itself we can kind of go through those things or we can just cheer you on as you have picked out your supplies for the sweater your first sweater i'm so excited if it's your first um and then yeah and that is it so i gotta go and cook dinner before i log back into work so we will call this one a wrap i will see y'all when i see y'all and within the next couple of days or weeks you'll start to see some posts and ask your opinion so look out for that and just be sure to let me know what you like what you're thinking and i will talk to you later bye